Hello, and welcome to the Mesoamerican Reef. I'm Victor DeMay. No, not the fish. There, that's me. Let's explore the flora and fauna of this reef together. Let's start with the French angelfish. As juveniles, the French angelfish look like this. Note the blue fins and yellow stripes, because these all fall away as they age. To this, the French angelfish form pairs and will defend their homes together, like these two. They are curious and territorial pairs. How adorable is that? Speaking of defensive, watch this juvenile fend off some grazing horse-eyed jacks. This reef isn't all colorful fish and joy. You must be defensive. So, let's look at some of the predators in this ocean. Let's start with the needlefish. The needlefish is attracted to light. That is why they can be found close to shores and docks. They can jump out of the water at speeds up to 60 kilometers per hour and have been reported jumping, hitting, impaling, and killing people. What an impressive predator. But that is nothing compared to the next fish. The Great Barracuda. The camera doesn't do this one justice, but it was five feet long. What a top predator. For this next predator, I will be showing some images because I do not have very much footage. This is the moray eel. Interestingly enough, the moray eel has two jaws, like in the movie Aliens. They use their outer jaws to hold their prey and their inner jaws to eat and swallow. Only moray eels have pharynxal jaws. Swimming past another angelfish and carrying on past some very interesting sea cucumbers, I spot a cave with one of the most destructive predators, the lionfish. Lionfish are destructively invasive with poisonous spines and the ability to lay up to 2 million eggs a year. It's no surprise they're so good at invading new ecosystems. This one even tried to sting me. With all of these fierce predators, let's take a look at how some prey have overcome these threats. The most common way is called schooling, where many fish school together. A very common schooling species is called the big-eyed yellow snapper. Their colors and their movement patterns confuse predators. Snappers deeply understand the concept of strength in numbers. They can even school up with other snapper species for protection. Another great way to trick predators is by mastering camouflage. With a view of 360 degrees, the yellow stingray is the master of hide-and-go-seek. Being small and docile, it is very easy to approach these guys, letting me capture some magnificent shots. Their docile nature is deserved if you factor in their painful yet non-fatal to humans sting. It gives the yellow stingray a reason to be respected. Shots like these make me want to create more content for you guys. So if you could take a moment out of your time to like the video and subscribe, it would mean the world to me. The next master of camouflage is the sand diver. The sand diver is part of the lizardfish family and can gradually darken or lighten their colors to blend in. They also have a fan dorsal fin that resembles legs for laying on the sand. The sand diver's lifespan remains a mystery, a real underwater Houdini. Let's take a look at a more aggressive defense mechanism. For example, the spines on the magnificent long-spined sea urchin or the short, dense, but beautiful spines on the West Indian sea urchin. Sea urchins can live up to 200 years in the wild, and being covered in thousands of sharp, brittle spines, they're the reason it's always important to wear water shoes when diving. Now, let's talk about some friendlier spike balls. The pufferfish. To be exact, this is a balloon fish. A pufferfish has smooth skin, while balloonfish and blowfish have the iconic spines, seen here. Balloonfish are shockingly intelligent. Their big eyes help them see at night as well. With their cute face, silly eyes, and developed character, 
They are without a doubt my favorite fish. Speaking of favorite fish, the next shot is a tiny, adorable, smooth trunk fish. I won't be saying anything. I would like you to really enjoy these shots to the fullest. It is so cute to see how this trunk fish hides in his little hole and looks back at me like it's his home. In fact, it probably is. Many fish hide in small holes in the coral, like this thin-leafed coral providing fabulous shelter for small fish, like this juvenile yellow-tailed damselfish. I do feel bad for stressing these guys out in their own homes. We humans really prioritize our privacy, and the way that these fish react make me feel like I'm an intruder. So, let's remember to respect the wildlife altogether. I'm sorry, little guys, I'll leave you alone now. And let's go take a look at the more, less mobile creatures of this ocean. For example, this giant anemone. Or next, this, this might look like an anemone, but it's actually a cluster of feather duster worms. Or the sea sponge growing in the sand. I love love coral and I believe it is one of the most interesting organisms ever. Let's take a look together at some species. Here is some beginner thinleaf coral. Next, some rose coral. This tiny purple sea fan? Or this mustard hill coral? A lovely bed of Eusmilia. I could not find the exact species, but if you can, please let me know in the comments below. Here we have some more mustard hill coral. But wait, what is that? That is a Christmas tree worm. Their two plumes, you see, are lined with mucus and spikes to trap floating food particles. Oh, sorry to interrupt you. The rest of their body is hidden in a calcium carbonate tube. They can also hide in it, like this. Whoop! The worms can come in red, orange, yellow, blue, and white. They really add some color to these environments. Another worm that does crawl around is the fireworm. They are a type of bristle worm. They have stingers that line their body that burn like fire, hence the name. Another common sting of the ocean is the jellyfish. If you listen closely, you can hear the exact moment I got stung. Ooh. I love watching aquatic animals go about their day. Let's look at some fish displaying daily mannerisms. Like this blue parrotfish grabbing some bites to eat. Or this yellow-tailed damselfish using my lens like a mirror. Or the stripes on this blue-striped grunt. Or the snapper resting, waiting for a wrasse to come clean it. It was very fun having you along for this dive. So, maybe you feel inspired to grab a friend, grab some goggles, and go explore. Who knows? Maybe I'll see you out there.